Hi everyone, today we're going to take a look at the performance of the new Olympus OM-1, uh, specifically in its buffering performance with UHS-1 cards, UHS-2 cards, and using the sequential high-speed shutter. Uh, and this is particularly useful, I think, for sports action type photographers, where you need to capture as many frames as possible as quickly as possible. So let's get started. Now there's a lot of variables that can come into play when we talk about the performance of the camera in the real world versus, you know, here in the test setting. Uh, for example, continuous autofocus. You know, if you have a subject that's moving around erratically back and forth, left and right, uh, the camera's going to slow down to try to acquire focus continuously on that subject. So you're not going to capture as many frames, say, versus maybe the person is just standing there. Maybe they're a juggler, for example, and they're not moving around a lot. You're going to capture a lot more frames of someone standing still versus a subject that's moving around erratically. So I'm going to eliminate that variable of the continuous autofocus. Now, another thing that can affect the performance in the field is image stabilization. When you have image stabilization turned on, it can slow down or reduce the number of frames you can capture per second because the camera is going to try to stabilize the image uh, before it takes the picture. Now, when you're in SH1 and SH2, the camera will take the picture regardless of it thinks it has the image stabilized or not. Uh, and, you know, so the impact there is going to be much more reduced if not completely eliminated. I'm not sure if it turns the image stabilization completely off or if it just um, tries to stabilize. But if we're in a high frame per second situation, uh, it's going to take the picture before it stabilizes. Uh, but in other modes like sequential silent shutter, um, you know, stabilization will be on. And there's definitely a dramatic difference there uh, in terms of how many frames you can capture per second. My testing methodology is basically designed to see when the buffer gets full, how many images do we capture into the buffer, how many images do we capture after the buffer is full, and how many do we capture in total during a 10 second burst through the different shutter modes. So here are my basic testing parameters. We're gonna do a 10 second burst in SH1, which is sequential high speed shooting at 120 frames per second with SAF. Uh, we're gonna do sequential high speed two, which is 50 frames per second, and theoretically with continuous autofocus, but again, I'll be using single autofocus to eliminate that variable. And then we're also gonna do just regular sequential shooting which is 20 frames per second. Now, I'm gonna be doing all of these different modes with different file formats. So we're gonna be doing JPEG only, RAW plus JPEG, and RAW only, and then see if the performance varies using the different file formats. All right, so let me give you a quick overview of the spreadsheet and all the data points I collected. So again, I'm doing a 10 second burst with silent shutter. Uh, th this is the camera column, which camera it is. This is the format. So UHS-1 plus JPEG only. UHS-1 RAW plus JPEG. And then UHS-1 RAW only. And this is using a single card slot. And then we did UHS-2 in the same uh, uh, order. And then we did combinations of UHS-1 and UHS-2 or two UHS-2s or two UHS-1s. We'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, and then, of course, the shutter mode. So we have 60 frame per second on the M1 Mark III with a uh, single autofocus, and then a sequential silent shutter of 18 frames per second with continuous autofocus. But again, I'll be using single autofocus to eliminate that, that variable. Uh, and this is how many images it captured in total during that 10 second burst. This is how long it took to clear the buffer completely. And then this is how long it took before the buffer actually got full during the burst mode. Uh, and that's gonna affect the frames per second after the buffer is full. And that's what these numbers represent here is that after the buffer got full, what was the speed of the camera after that? Uh, and that, that can be very significant. And uh, there's some big differences here in some cases. In some cases, there's almost no difference. And you'll see, see what I mean. Um, now in the OM-1, we have a new uh, higher speed sequential shutter of 120 frames per second in single autofocus. We have a uh, super high speed 2, which is 50 frames per second with a compatible lens. Some lenses go down to 25 frames per second, uh, but I'll be using a pro lens uh, that is compatible with that speed. And then we have our normal sequential 
silent shutter of 20 frames per second with continuous autofocus. And then this number here, what I did here is I held the shutter down until the buffer got full and then tried to see how many images do we capture in total. Uh, and then what was the frame per second during that burst? Uh, so here you can see we captured quite a few, 195 frames. It only took 15 seconds to clear the buffer after we captured those images. And uh, I was able to go uh, hold the shutter down for 23 seconds straight. And my frame rate worked out to be 8.5 frames per second. Again, with single point autofocus and IBIS turned on. So there's a lot of data there. And obviously I can't cover every combination or variable of the data points that I collected, but hopefully you get an idea of the camera's potential under ideal conditions. Uh, and then you can try to extrapolate how that camera will perform for you in the kind of shooting that you do. Now, I'm not going to go over all of the data points in this video. I'm just going to kind of do a quick summary and analysis for you of what I found. Also talk about some of the unexpected results and why that might be. Uh, but I will provide a link down below to this spreadsheet so you can download it and extrapolate the data any way that you want uh, that might fit the way that you shoot so that you can get an idea of how the camera is going to perform. Uh, particularly if you haven't bought this camera yet, right? You want to get some ideas. Uh, so with that said, let's look at uh, my analysis. All right, so let's take a look at the first analysis here. And this is an SH-1, 120 frames per second with a 10 second burst. And this is using a single card in one slot. And if you're a JPEG only shooter, you're going to capture the same number of images uh, in a 10 second burst. And after the buffer's full, which happens in about one second in this camera, uh, you're still going to be shooting at roughly six frames per second uh, on either card. And then once you let go of the shutter in 10 seconds, the buffer is going to clear in about the same time, 15 seconds. Now we do see a substantial difference here when we go to RAW plus JPEG. We're capturing, uh, what is that, 12 more images on the UHS-2 card, but we're getting an extra frame per second after the buffer is full. So uh, instead of 1.7, we're getting 2.7. So that's roughly a 50% increase, whatever that percentage is. But that's pretty substantial uh, increase in speed after the buffer is full. And there's also a big difference here. Um, it took 62 seconds for the UHS-1 card to, to flush. And it only took 32 seconds to flush to the UHS-2 card. So you can get back up to speed. Uh, pretty quickly with a UHS-2 card. And then finally, if you're shooting RAW only, there are the numbers there. Again, uh, a nice bump here of nine frames captured. Uh, the same bump here of one frame per second better or faster. And then also an improvement in terms of time to flush the buffer. Uh, five seconds faster using a UHS-2 card. So SH-1, how does that translate in real life? Well, when you're doing a 10 second burst, right? And you push the shutter button, your buffer is going to fill up in one second. I mean, because it only holds 93 frames in one second. And uh, for the next nine seconds, depending on the SD card that you're using, UHS-1 or UHS-2, depending on the file format that you chose, JPEG only, RAW only, RAW plus JPEG, uh, it's going to it's going to vary how many more frames you capture after that first second. Uh, so look at that data again, and you can get an idea of how to use the 120 frame per second SH-1. Uh, for me, I can't think of too many applications I would use that for, but it's there available for you. And now that you see how the camera will perform, you can make a decision on when you think it makes sense to use such a, such a feature. Now there's SH-2 which is 50 frames per second. And I found the numbers to be very similar. The only difference was that the buffer filled in two seconds instead of one, because we're doing it at half the speed, right? So after the first two seconds, your buffer is full. And then for the next eight seconds, your frame rate and number of image captured and everything else is pretty similar in buffer clearing. So, you know, maybe you choose SH2 when you think you need two seconds of action instead of one. But also SH2 has the added benefit of continuous autofocus, right? Versus SH1. 
So SH2 is probably a better option for most uh, sports action type shooters. Uh, but just be aware of the limitations in terms of the buffer and how many frames you capture, depending on the card that you're using. All right, so for the final analysis, I wanted to see what would happen when I used both SD card slots and wrote the same image to both cards. So I got, I'm writing to card one and sending a duplicate to card two. And you can see that uh, on the first line, UHS-2 in the first card slot, UHS-1 in the second card slot. And these shutter modes, um, 120 frames per second, uh, we're not capturing quite as many images. We're down to 134. It took 20 seconds to clear the buffer. Only one second to fill it. And then our frame rate worked out to 4.6 frames per second. When we moved up to UHS, dual UHS-2 cards, you can see we did capture like 10 more images. We cleared the buffer five seconds faster. And then uh, we gained one frame per second in shutter speed after the buffer was full. What's interesting here, though, is that this is typically how I shoot. Silent shutter, 20 frames per second, raw. And you can see I didn't really capture any more images. The buffer did clear faster. I'll give it that. But ultimately, my overall frame rate in a 10-second burst was the same uh, because the buffer, you can see, never filled up at this speed. Uh, so in this scenario, there's no point for me to get dual UHS-2. I could probably get away with dual UHS-1. And that's what it gets really interesting, is especially when we're shooting RAW plus JPEG. No matter what combination of UHS cards I used, in these three shutter modes, or this one shutter mode, I should say, 120 frames per second, you can see there's virtually no difference, no matter how I mix the cards up. And then here, when I go to my, my favorite mode, sequential silent shutter, um, very little difference between these, these uh, three different combinations of UHS-2 cards and UHS-1. So that's what kind of surprised me the most was that for the kind of shooting I do, birds in flight, sequential shutter, 20 frame per second, continuous autofocus, I probably didn't need to spend $400 on two UHS-2 cards. Uh, I could have got away with just the two UHS-1 cards that I already had um, and gotten the same performance out of the camera for, the, for birds in flight, for example. Uh, now, that said, if you want the best out of your camera, the UHS-2 cards definitely have areas where it does make a big difference. You know, you get capture more images, you clear the buffer faster, you get a faster frame per second after the buffer is full, and you can get back up to speed very quickly. Um, and in those situations, yeah, if you need it, UHS-2 card is the only way to go. Now, there is one other reason you may want to consider getting a UHS-2 card versus a UHS-1 card, and that's in the post-processing of offloading the images from the SD card into your computer. Now, there's a lot of variables here that come into play. I did uh, an import into Lightroom, which has kind of its own little bit of overhead when it's importing images. Uh, but I was still able to shave off uh, about 30%. You know, I, I downloaded everything in three and a half minutes versus four and a half minutes, uh, roughly. And that's a substantial time savings when you're talking about thousands and thousands of images. Uh, you'll see even a better improvement when you're offloading video files or large video files from an SD card into Lightroom or into your computer. Uh, it can be a substantial time savings. So UHS-2 cards still have a role, even though it may not play a role in your camera. You know, let's say your camera doesn't have, even have UHS-2 slots. It can still play a significant role in post-processing. So again, I'll have links down below to the spreadsheets so you can kind of extrapolate from the data what combination of shutter modes and memory cards work best for you and how you can get the best performance or bang for the buck. I'll also have links uh, down below to the memory cards that I purchased. Uh, I think they performed very well uh, according to these standard benchmarks that I have here, uh, as well as uh, the data that I put into the spreadsheet. And if you like these kind of videos, consider making a donation. It really helps me out to make more videos like this. And also uh, consider subscribing, hit the like button, 
But either way, I appreciate you watching and hopefully we'll see you again soon.